Huh, it definitely does look like Biden had a very interesting slip of the tongue last night. Are you confident that there will be a peaceful transfer of power in January 2025? If Trump wins, no, I'm not confident at all. I mean, if Trump loses, I'm not confident at all. He means what he says. We don't take him seriously. He means it. But does Biden mean what he says? We'll get into that in this particular video, as, of course, November 5th is just nearly 90 days away, as there's going to be a lot of crazy-ish that happens in between then, but specifically on that date that I already have anxiety over. As in this video, we particularly want to lay out all the scenarios, the things that are developing, and how probably they will unfold if Kamala wins or Donald Trump wins. This says that statement originally ushered by Joe Biden was played by CBS News teasing their full interview with the current president of the United States, which will be coming out in just a few days from now. As of course, that little bit has galvanized a lot of headlines as I think it's also important to play the full clip in its entirety to give you guys the full perspective of what the current president of the United States said in his underground basement bunker where he has been kept safe like a potato and vegetable. There's a lot of parallels to make there. As he finally came out and, and did an interview, unlike his uh, running mate, Kamala, who's not really doing those. As it's fair to say, very rarely does the Democratic Party machine actually officially do unscripted interviews, as this one probably was scripted as well. Then Joe Biden couldn't even get his lines right. All the stuff about if we lose, there'll be a bloodbath. It's have to be a stolen election. Look what they're trying to do now in the local election districts where people count the votes elected are putting people in place in states that they're going to count the votes, right? Now, personally, I, I don't know if the president of the United States knows what the president of the United States is saying, which, which is not a good sign since he still has to be in office up until January. As a lot of people are saying that he said the quiet part out loud and described what he said in his own words, that there won't be a peaceful transition of power if Trump becomes elected. Then, of course, he said, oh, wait, excuse me, whoa, 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 excuse me, if Trump loses. But uh, again, th those statements, either way, I think are true as we are being politically divided more than ever in the United States, not just with social media algorithms and echo chambers, but also very divisive corporate media coverage as big tech social media organizations also have their own individual horse in this particular race. And there's a lot at stake here, not just for the future of the United States, but the future of the Middle East, the future of Europe, the future of energy independence, the future of immigration. There's a lot of things, especially when it comes to the economy, that are going to be drastically changed and usurped, allegedly, if Donald Trump becomes the next president of the United States. It's if, of course, they allow it, as recently there was an attempt on his life that was extremely serious. As there's different coalitions, different factions kind of forming here, and setting up the battle lines for November 5th. And it really does look like things are getting serious, as I think it's also fair to say that power doesn't usually relinquish very easily. And if we're going to be doing any kind of threat kind of assessment or analysis here, it's the current party in charge right now. It's the current party that has the corporate media, a lot of the big tech social media, a lot of the multinational corporation standing behind them, that truly is, I think, the party to look at when it comes to them potentially relinquishing power and authority over to someone who, of course, is promising to drastically change it. And in doing so, not only upend a lot of the very kind of lucrative contracts, a lot of the deals, a lot of the money and authority rolling into these very powerful organizations and groups, as of course, they're going to have a couple things to say about it, as right now, things are trying to be figured out politically. But after November 5th, depending on the results, depending if we even get results, I think it's fair to say there's going to be a significant faction that is not going to be happy. And of course, one faction has a lot of power, has a lot of money. Another faction represents a lot of suburban, country, blunken, red-blooded American types that uh, don't like to be told what to do. Either way, I think it's fair to say we're, we're facing another freaking disaster that I think, you know, that we're all on the locomotive on, not willingly, as more coal is being 
throw it in into the engine as it keeps going faster and faster and faster. And there's a nice cliff over there that, that, that that's going on. And I'm just saying, hey, g g stop. Can, can, can we pause here a little bit? And of course we can. But the right thing, the smart thing to do in this kind of moment, like, we're going to get derailed. We're going to go up that cliff to say, hey, can we please not? And sadly, those voices are very rare. As of course, everyone's cheering on their caboose in this train. That's not going to good places. Now, before I lay out all the scenarios here of what happens if Kamala wins, if Trump wins, if it's even Kamala, the larger factions that are building here are clearly highlighted in a latest artificial intelligence study that looked at 130,000 plus news headlines from 550 plus news organizations that are highlighting that over the past three months, Kamala Harris's coverage and sentiment has been improving dramatically over, of course, very favorable coverage over her political opponent that doesn't get that much favorability from the corporate establishment media. As the corporate media does still have some sway, some influence over the general public, and their kind of interpretations of what's going on here is vitally important for the general public, especially during this election cycle. As The Guardian has headlines like this, describing how they're going to be kicking some buttocks and how Hollywood celebrities are supporting. Tim Walls, the VP pick for Kamala Harris, as of course you look up the other VP pick on this alleged news organization and you get nothing but, of course, PR weaponized statements against him when he said uh, something about childless cat ladies about seven years ago. This as there have been a lot of reports of very strong turnouts for the Kamala Harris campaign that has been able to fill a lot of stadiums. Again, this is one of their second days of officially campaigning. And the numbers of people that they've been able to get in places like Wisconsin and Michigan, let's be honest here, are pretty impressive. And of course, this is the latest video from Michigan highlighting a lot of people. Now, the strategy that they're implementing here is officially getting a lot of celebrities, a lot of musicians, and saying, hey, we're going to do a big concert here and uh, come out. Kamala is also going to be here, as, of course, a lot of people are saying, yeah, I'll come out to a free concert. That sounds fun. And it's a smart political strategy. Now, some people on the right are trying to, of course, kind of dissuade this, saying, no, 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 they're only there for the celebrities and music. And, and I'm like, it doesn't matter. The optics here matter. The amount of people that come out matter. The amount of emails that they're able to get and contacts that they're able to get. The amount of people that they're able to register to vote at these particular events matters. And whether you call it underhanded or unfair, it's happening. And the numbers of people coming out for Kamala Harris are absolutely impressive, as even major predicted markets and betting places are now even talking about the favorability of her becoming the, the next president of the United States. Now, you look at the Republicans and the kind of legislative moves they made within the last four years, and they are absolutely not impressive at all. Now, Donald Trump is trying to fight back through also a very significant internet presence that Kamala Harris has recently garnered by, of course, doing live streams with Aiden Ross and in a couple days doing a major interview with Elon Musk on Twitter, an interview that sure is about to get a lot of attention and is going to be carefully watched by millions and millions of people, as a lot of people are expecting a very interesting conversation about these two individuals that are becoming more and more politically aligned, whether they like it or not. This as it definitely does look like they have a common foe, that being, of course, Kamala Harris, as Elon Musk recently came out and called Kamala Harris literally a communist, posting a particular video of her explaining how he sees her not merely calling for equal opportunity, but equal outcomes. Everybody should end up in the same place. And since we didn't start in the same place, some folks might need more. Equitable distribution giving resources based on equity, understanding that we, we fight for equality, but we also need to fight for equity, understanding not everyone starts out at the same place. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests often everybody should get the same thing. Well, that often assumes everybody started out in the same place, as opposed to equity, which is everyone should end up in the same place. Yeah, that worked absolutely awful in all the communist and socialist countries that, of course, promised, oh, we're going to give everyone everything. It's all going to be equal. 
And in reality, a few elites took everything for themselves and left people with breadcrumbs to, of course, fight over, as, of course, the distribution was uneven very dramatically in communist countries like Poland that my family grew up in, that my family had to go through horrible atrocities in order to frickin' survive. So, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, but not sorry. That, that failed policy has, of course, not worked ever in recorded human history. And there's many victims that are usually left behind or have their lives ended because of it. As, of course, her running mate also doesn't believe in free speech, doesn't believe it's guaranteed. As, of course, he is prioritizing people's emotions, people's ability to be offended over people's ability to speak freely, as he even openly declared that he is an admitted socialist. And that's what a lot of people are running up against, as, of course, these are also the same individuals that during the Summer of Love, the mostly peaceful but fiery protests that happened all throughout the United States were cheered on and supported by these individuals as poor communities were burnt down all across the United States. Three dozen individuals lost their lives that we know of. And the first lady for the governor of Minnesota and the current running mate for Kamala Harris literally is in, in an interview describing how she left her windows open during the 2020 BLM riots so she could smell the burning tires and soak in the moment behind her, of course, probably private community and armed security guards that prevented the liberators, the mostly peaceful protesters from, of course, affecting her life as other people's businesses burned to the ground. Riots. I could smell the burning tires and um, that was that was a very real thing and I kept the windows open for as long as I could because I felt like that was such a touchstone of what was what was happening yeah as I think it's fair to say that if on November 5th Donald Trump is declared the winner that a lot of major urban areas just like in 2020 will of course explode in civil unrest I think it's fair to say that a lot of organizations a lot of groups will be mobilized and a lot of people will be protesting in the areas that predominantly voted against Donald Trump. So there's going to be some levels of chaos, as, of course, the last time that Donald Trump actually won the election and was inaugurated, there was also a lot of unrest within Washington, D.C. I was there covering it on the ground, as, of course, people decided to burn down private property as well, destroy businesses around them. And let's be honest here, that probably will happen at a more extreme level this time if Donald Trump becomes elected. Now, let's just say the inverse happens, as, of course, there's already a lot of politicians and bureaucrats coming out and saying that if Donald Trump gets elected, they're not going to be helping him. They're not going to be participating in his government. They're going to be doing everything to, in order to stall any of his efforts to implement some of the changes that he wants to implement. As, of course, there's even foreign governments right now trying to lobby the U.S. House of Representatives to codify foreign aid to them to make sure that the money keeps flowing to continue the foreign proxy conflicts that the U.S. Pentagon and intelligence agencies are involved in as of course there are already many underhanded efforts against donald trump even though he's not the president of the united states so if he becomes elected he faces an uphill bureaucratic battle a lot of civil unrest and there's going to be chaos in major urban areas now let's just say he loses um i think it's fair to say there's going to be a lot of pissed off republicans that will shake their hand angrily what are they going to do? Are they going to riot? No. They're not organized like the left is. Let's just be honest here. What are they going to do? Are they going to protest? Probably not. Are they going to say they're not happy on social media? Probably. What, what's, gonna, what's going to be the response here? Well, let's just be kind of pragmatic here. Probably nothing. Um, and, and again, this could be just my perceived biases here, but I, I, I do not see 
any kind of institution, any kind of organization that has sway and power causing any kind of deliberate chaos, as of course a lot of right-wing organizations that were previously organizing have been directly affected by the FBI and DOJ that dismantled them and threw many of them in jail. A lot of the kind of core group has been specifically not just prosecuted, but but traumatized and, and had a tremendous chilling effect on it being put on what happened during J6, which many of the individuals within the right wing organizations saw as a setup, which, of course, will prevent any kind of protests from really being mobilized in the future and, of course, undermines them with, of course, the very heavy handed approach that the Biden administration and the Biden DOJ has had on those groups and organizations that officially have been kind of dismantled and thrown into utter disarray. So do I see some kind of civil unrest happening from right now? Uh, again, I don't see much happening because there's no organizations to allow anything to happen. There's no kind of right-wing Antifa answer. There used to be. There isn't. Whether you think that's good or bad, it doesn't matter. But but factually speaking, there isn't. Now, there are some states like Florida and Texas that are probably not going to be happy as well. And there might be larger succession efforts that probably will be unsuccessful. Now, what I do see happening on the left is they become a lot more aggressive as well, since, of course, they will have the power and they, of course, will allow more immigration, which, of course, will change not only the demographics of this country, but also the congressional representation, which now will overwhelmingly favor Democrats. And now with a congressional takeover, they, of course, will be able to take over the Supreme Court. When they take over the Supreme Court, they'll be able to, of course, essentially do whatever they want and rule forever without ever being questioned. And this is what a lot of right-wingers are kind of seeing on the precipice here, as, of course, individuals like Elon Musk, Twitter and X and Rumble and all these other ones are probably going to be dealt some very serious repressive actions against them by the state that will cease them from being able to exist. Now, the efforts by some states trying to, of course, leave the union, again, won't work. And then slowly and surely, the state will start to boil the frog and start to become more intrusive in your life. And resistance will be futile because we'll be set up upon against each other, fighting each other based off petty differences, rather than the actual progress that is being made against our prosperity and our freedom. The progress that already has been very aggressively made during the last four years that will gradually now continue, as of course there will never now be a check against it, and therefore they could now do it in perpetuity without even needing to take a step back. As of course the acquiescence, the participation of the general public no longer will be needed. And, uh, yeah. That's what, what's at stake here for this election. Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know why down in the comment section below. But legitimately, yeah, I agree with uh, old man Biden. I don't think there's going to be a, a peaceful transfer of power as, of course, whatever does happen, there's going to be some chaos. And I think we should be doing everything in our power in order to try to prevent it from happening. And if you agree with that, share this video with your friends and family members. Those, of course, diagnosing and understanding the problem is the first thing you need to do in order to, of course, rightfully address it. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on LukeUnfiltered.com. Support We Are Change the Shop. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, get it on TheBestPoliticalShirts.com. I keep forgetting to plug stuff to support my business and my company. Again, TheBestPoliticalShirts.com. Get this shirt. Type in Make America Florida. Uh, one of the, the many shirts that we have available to you on TheBestPoliticalShirts.com. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on YouTube.com forward slash We Are Change.